Well, finally we're getting some snow. And that's a good thing because some of my most memorable hunts have been in the snow, maybe yours too. Again, this is going back to the 80s, mid 80s. Um, it seemed I hunted every weekend of the season and that would be three months long in Michigan. So there's many great memories I have between Christmas and New Year's up in the thumb area of Michigan, pushing small woodlots with our bows, trying to fill some doe tags in the late season. That was that time where I believe the thumb area had 55 deer per square mile. And this was in an area where it's flat and not a lot of woods. So you'd have big groups of deer running from uh, woodlot to woodlot. We'd have deer dozens at a time, sometimes running by standers with a bow. You can imagine all the mishaps. And we even shot a few deer here and there. So it was fun, but a lot of times in the snow. And now fast forward into this time period right now, hunting Southwest Wisconsin, Southeast Minnesota, UP of Michigan when I was in there late 90s and 2000s, migration routes, deer moving deer in the snow, deer moving to different habitat for winter ranges. It's all a blessing when it comes to the deer season. And right now we've talked about our second rut, um, sit alert that you know, was really last Thursday and it's focusing on this time period right now, but we're getting that snow right now. And when you combine the second rut, you combine snow, you combine dropping temperatures, great things happen. So we're gonna talk about the what, when, why, and where when it comes to hunting deer in the snow. And uh, let's just jump right into it because I'm excited. I'm gonna be out here in the snow and I want you guys to be out in the snow too because there's a lot of potential uh, for you out there and I hope you can grab it. First off, why to hunt deer in the storm? Why to hunt deer in the snow in the first place? When it snows, and I can think back to, you know, visiting properties and parcels all around the country, you know, over 1,100 now in 26 states. I'll talk to clients all the time about their habitat and especially about their food plots. We'll really um, talk about that. And this isn't necessarily related specifically to private land, but when it comes to food plots, it's an indication of what deer need for habitat during, when the going gets tough. I can remember a, Andy was his name, uh, client in the Eau Claire area, Wisconsin. And one year he had 40, 50 deer staying on, on his property the entire winter. And from December, late November on, we had a really harsh winter. And let's say that was 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. And then 2012, we had, uh, um, 2011, 2012 was a warm winter. And then the year before it was really cold. So that, that warm winter, he had all these deer staying on there during the cold weather. Those deer had moved from their fall ranges, open hardwoods. They're trying to get browse, not much there, not much cover. And they moved into his parcel where they had good conifer cover, good hill systems to block the northwest winds. And they had four acres of beans. Following year, he had warm weather. The deer never came in and he had literally had rotting beans in the spring. And right there, that really impressed upon me 10 years ago, just the extreme difference from one year to the next, just purely based on cold weather and snow. Cold weather and snow gets deer moving. They move to their winter areas, away from their fall areas. They get hungrier. Obviously when it's snowing, it's colder. Typically it's not snowing. We're not getting snow because it's not cold enough. You know, we're getting rain. We're not getting anything at all. It's just warm weather like we've been having almost all fall so far. Even last year, by the end of October, we had measurable snow several inches. This year we didn't. We had a little snow here and there in, in November, but um, it's been very little. And yesterday, Dylan and I were out hunting. It was close to 50. The day before it was in the 50s. The day before that it was almost 60. And this is the end of November and early December. So yesterday was December 1st. So when it comes to snow, deer are moving for food. They're moving to find a different type of cover than they've needed all fall. And that creates opportunities for you. And as I talk about all the time, when that temperature drops, in the extremities it takes to get that temperature to drop. Deer become hungry. They need to spend more energy surviving. That needs to mean they need to replace that energy. They're stressed out when storms go through. And so a good old fashioned snowstorm during this time of year really means that deer are on their feet and it means you should be heading to your deer stands. Number two, when do you hunt? Someone asked a question yesterday or today on one of the videos, I was talking about the, the uh, cold weather alert for the second rut. And they asked, you know, when during a storm should be hunting? That's a good question because when we're getting like a light, wet snowfall, and I can think of a time last year, Dylan and I were out, we got covered. Dylan has some good footage, I'm sure he's showing you, of an inch or two of snow on me. And someone pointed out that means you have good clothes, you're, you're insulated, you know, your sweat's not coming through and actually melting that snow on the outside. And that was a good point. That was interesting, someone made that. But we had snow covering us, it was coming down and 
It was a great morning to hunt. I remember Diane over in Wisconsin, she saw a couple monster bucks in that snowstorm. And when you have that lighter snow, and it, I mean heavy snow, but I mean as far as the weight of the snow, but when you have that light snowfall coming down, not extreme winds, deer are moving. I think a lot of times, let's look at it in deer's world, they're out all night, they don't have strong winds, light snow coming down, it's accumulating, but they're really putting the feedback on because they know the conditions are changing. A lot of times that snowfall darkens the sky and then pretty soon it's 20 minutes after shooting light and it's barely light enough to see at least posted legal hours. Those deer are out in the open fields, they're out in the open hardwoods, they're trying to find food, now they need to get back to their bedding areas. Out in the open, when it's snowy, if it starts to blow in the mid-morning, to me, they're starting to move into more of those sheltered pockets of cover. And so I see a lot more movement in the morning during those times, just a snowstorm added, compared to when there's not a snowstorm. Now, I'm not talking about blizzard conditions where you're getting fast accumulating snow, you can't see more than 30, 40 yards. I'm just talking about that nice light snow. I love hunting during that, when that falls in the morning or evening, and it matches the conditions. For example, Pre-rut time, there's some great morning rut activity. We see that on our trail cameras. Doesn't matter if it's morning, evening, so I'm out there in the woods, in the cover, trying to find those spots, and I'm avoiding those big food sources in the morning if I'm going out to hunt. So I'm looking for that opportunity during the snow, but especially after the storm rolls through, especially the bigger, the badder the storm. When there's six, eight inches on the ground and those deer have been pushed into their winter cover, Pretty easy to figure out that they're not in the open hardwoods, they're not in the open fields anymore, they're probably not out in the open grasslands and CRP fields. They're tucked back in some thick cover where it's low, they're out of the wind, and they're just huddled down, making a nice little pocket in the snow where they've been bedding for several hours, and they get up and move after that storm has gone through. They need to replenish that energy that they burned to stay warm. They've been missing feeding opportunities because of that blizzard condition and it's an incredible time to hunt. I remember a lot of times in the UP and Michigan hunting deer migration routes on public land. I'd specifically go after that storm went through and see great movement. If that, if that storm blew out in the morning and say great e movement in the evening, afternoon hunt. If the storm blew out into the early evening, right after dark, you'd see great morning movement after that storm had settled down. So you're really timing your sits with that. But I love hunting during the storm, if you're getting moderate conditions, moderate winds, and then certainly after the storm goes through in just about any condition during those temperature drops because deer are hungry. Where am I hunting? You know, again, morning I'm hunting bedding areas, afternoon I'm hunting food sources. I'm not hunting a morning food source location because if deer are there, I'm blowing them out. I'm ruining a predictable afternoon hunt where deer not only are heading to food because they're hungry because of the storm, but a lot of those rut crazed bucks have lost a lot of weight. They need to recover. They need to refuel their bodies. And so they're hitting the feed bag that time. That's a different factor than even the does and fawns. They need to really put the feed bag on. So I'm hunting thick cover though. I'm looking for high stem count regeneration. Out in public land, I'm looking for clear cuts, open pockets, swamp land where hardwoods meets low land, timber cuts. The more diversity you can have in one location is great for deer hunting all season long, but certainly during the winter time, you're staying away from those open areas, finding conifer cover. And it's interesting, people have conifer on their property and they, you know, people think that conifer is this great cover. It is during extreme storms. The rest of the time, deer don't wanna be in there. They're going in there for shelter. So this is the one time of the year that deer can actually go in there, they wanna go in there. Other than that, there's no food in there. So on a daily basis during the hunting season, they don't wanna bed in conifer unless there's time, some type of food source in there. And because of the closed canopy nature of the conifer stand, there's no cover or there's no browse in there. So there's no reason for them to be there in there during the daylight. But adjacent to conifer, red cedar thickets, shrub thickets, hardwood regeneration, goldenrod, ragweed, briars mixed in, pockets here and there, where deer can get out of the wind. Think about you know, as far as where a deer would go during a snowstorm and where they would relate to during really cold weather and those, those days that follow, think about where would you go if you were lost out in the woods and you needed to survive a night, you needed to survive a day or two days. You wouldn't just lay out in the open hardwoods where the wind is just smashing into you. You'd find some place where you can get out of the wind. You can tuck down into a location with high thermal cover. Thermal cover meaning that cedar, pine thicket, even lowland grass like the 
uh, switchgrass that we really push. You can tuck down in there, you're getting out of the wind. So great opportunities to find deer in areas where you would look at, where would I survive if I was out in this woods? Obviously, if there's expansive rolling hardwoods, hills of Pennsylvania where I like hunting public land. When we have those big snowstorms, those deer aren't just playing around up top. They're down in the hemlock bottoms. So I like looking at those transition lines between hemlock bottoms and upper benches where deer can go in, try to find some oaks or hardwood regeneration, but that they can tuck back down in the hemlock and conserve energy. So again, think about, you can eliminate a lot of area, whether it's private or public land where deer won't be during the winter time and especially during these snowstorms. Number four, morning versus evening. This is a tough one because if it's the second rut period, like right now, in your area, then the second rut is an outstanding time to hunt during the morning. I'm not going in those morning hunts though when we don't have those cold temperatures. So when there's snow and when you have a second rut, great time to hunt in the morning, but just be very careful that you're not hunting a movement that's highly predictable to a food source in the evening and potentially destroying that movement at that expense by just going in and taking a chance in the morning. There's great morning opportunity, but always think about if I'm hunting here in the morning, will this affect my evening hunt? Maybe I should hunt over here in the morning, hunt over here in the evening. We had, we have that luxury here where we're hunting Minnesota, Wisconsin. I might hunt a morning in Wisconsin and hunt an evening over in Minnesota. I can do that, flip around, give the smaller property in Wisconsin a break and, uh, and then move over to another property. So that's a lot of times, it's a lot of driving. It's about 50 minutes one way, but it's worth it to preserve stand locations. And maybe you could find that on public land too, where you're hunting more of those clear cut edges where you think they're coming in from bedding areas in the afternoon, evening, but then you're getting on the downwind side and a backdoor approach to that bedding area where you expect them to be. Maybe on the, coming in the back side of a cedar thicket, waiting for the deer to come to you. You've already pre-scouted, you know where those rubs are, you know where those little humps are back in the swamp, back in the uh, spruce swamp or conifer thicket. You're waiting for those deer to come back to you. And if you don't see them, you're going back out that back doorway and then hunting around on the other side for the evening approach. So, but if it's not the second rut, you don't have that rut timing. And a lot of times I'm waiting till that afternoon sit and I'm hunting that food source movement, whether it's a clear cut on public land, a stand of acorns down in the Southeast. It's interesting, you know, down in the Southeast, there's so much food. A stand of acorns can be really good during the late season, but it's not very good in the North half of the country because they're usually gone. Turkeys, deer, not as much food available, not as much forage. The cold weather hits sooner. And so acorns might be good down in the South in very limited areas, but when it comes to the North half of the country, you're looking for hardwood regeneration, briars, upland mixes, and then of course, high quality food plots. We're looking at, someone said the other day, they were talking about a brassica plot and they're waiting for their deer to hit it. Well, it was just a standalone brassica plot. So if you, if you plant a standalone brassica plot, a plot that's really slanted towards deer hitting it in December, January, and you don't have a complementary food source on the other half of the plot, something that's early season, we look at light planted oats, late planted beans, late planted peas, something that's green that the deer really like, top dressed with rye. If you don't have that on one side that's actually starting that pattern of deer use before the fall even begins, how can you expect those deer to all of a sudden slam home their winter ranges right during hunting season, the end of November, December? They might find it January, February, but that's too late in most states. So make sure that you're hunting food source movements that are complementary of the entire hunting season, especially on private land where you can plant it. And on public land, you're making sure and being mindful that where they feed in October is not necessarily where they're going to feed late November and early December. Number five, stand tips. This is an interesting one because you can't mess up. What I mean by that is as the season progresses, your skill in the stand and blind should be increasing. And it's also very parallel to how much deer notice movement in the stands. You know, you might've been able to get away with some movement on the side of a tree sticking out like in a tree saddle or something where you're really silhouetted against the sky. You might've been able to get away with some movement, turning around and putting your bow over this way to shoot at something. You can't get away with that movement during the winter time. It's not just the movement, you have to be quiet. They're used to picking out anything. And it seems like during the winter time when it's cold, your sound is magnified and any little noise is noticed by deer. Any little shuffle of your clothing, your clothing has to be quiet. I love, we love the first light gear because it's a very quiet outer shell. This, this material is right here, this on one of the whole cold weather face masks. It's almost stretchy, it's soft. And for that, it doesn't have, you know, if you have this fleece outer right here, if you've ever had something like that on the outside, it gets moisture 
and then it freezes against the tree, it turns to ice, and it becomes scrapey. So it scrapes against, makes a scraping noise against the tree, it can become pretty loud. So when you have this low pile, really smooth type clothing, it's very quiet, and that type of clothing is very important. And even with the fleece type, if you have some type of outer like that, you just don't move. You know, you, you learn where your movements are. Move around in your stand to see what kind of movements make certain noises that you should avoid when a deer comes in. Practice pulling your bow back a little bit. Make sure your rest has some good felt on the uh, for your bow when you pull it back on your rest so that it's quiet. If you don't do those things quietly, deer are going to spook. It really is time to be a predator. You know, this is, you've practiced all season and beginning of the season, deer are less wary. Towards the end of the season, they're very wary. They've been shot at, they've seen humans, they smelled hunter scent, and, uh, and they know they need to avoid it. At the same time, it's important to be warm. You know, everyone takes it for granted. We're just gonna wear what we were wearing before it snowed. Well, before it snowed, it was probably warmer out. You know, 40s, 50 degrees. When it's 20s, 30s, it's a different game in staying warm. So we have a lot of warm weather ways. We have tricks for staying warm in the deer stand. Recent videos that we've talked about that. But definitely some food to give you energy to burn so you stay warmer and then really focus on your head your hands and your feet i use the hand warmer tube for my hands i use that all season long but it's so critical during that time of the year and if it's snowing i'll take a gore-tex gator leg gator or a waterproof gator and you'll see that someone then that first light tag it's brown black what that is it's a waterproof layer and i can put that around my hand warmer tube so that moisture can't seep in get to my hands because once your hands get wet and it's this time of year, you need to go back home. You need to go back to the truck. Very important. So that's important. I keep the heat packs in there. It keeps the heat packs dry that way. I have multiple layers in my head and I have multiple layers on my feet. A lot of times I'm using, I think it's called the Thermashield or whatever these are, Dylan. Arctic Shield. Arctic Shield. I get the sizes, like three sizes big. So you can just slip your boot in. You can put a hand warmer pack right on top of your boot and that'll keep you warm. So those are really important tricks. And of course, proper laying, layering. I love um, using the merino wool. You can wash it, but it gives you a nice insulating layer. And then you have those great outer layers. And, and it really is, the more you spend on clothing, the warmer you're gonna be, the more comfortable you're gonna be. And I find the more expensive clothing is geared more towards a bow hunter and making sure you have articulated sleeves and legs and that you can actually move in the tree stand comfortably without making a bunch of noise, it helps you be a predator. So I hope you can take advantage of the snow coming through. It's a great time to be in the woods, it's a fun time. I mean, who doesn't love shooting big bucks in the snow and getting pictures in the snow? It's a great time of the year. Love seeing the tracks and it can really be stark. You go into a great area, you think, and there's no tracks. It tells you you're in the wrong spot. Then you have to ask yourself why. Go through everything, don't just blame it all on the neighbor. Blame it on, you know, did the deer react to my hunting pressure when I was going into these stands? Did I do something wrong? Be very critical of yourself. Be very critical of the situation. Always asking why will help you understand. And it's no different than if you're seeing a bunch of tracks, a bunch of sign, rub scrapes at that time of the year. Again, ask yourself why. Why is this taking place? Someone might think, well, they have great habitat, but there's a standing cornfield on the neighbors that year where there normally isn't. So look at the whole big picture and that'll help you understand for future movements, hunting movements, as it relates to where you can find deer during a snowstorm. But bottom line, when it happens, find the habitat, take advantage of the hunt, and you'll have a great hunt this winter during this snowstorm and beyond. And again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe down below. I love seeing your comments. I can't answer them all. I try to answer 20, 30, 40 comments every time a video comes out. That's what I spend an hour or two doing every morning. If you want to get your comments answered, short comments when the video first comes out. That's what I try to prioritize. That's when I have the time for it. And I try to answer everyone's if I can. And I try to answer the comments that will help the most people too. Have a great hunt. Folks, I want to make sure you check out my web class video series whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.